would just like everybody to know, did not stick to my TBR at all this month. Hey guys, what's up? It's Belle, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, and if you've come back, thank you so much. Also, you guys, happy Halloween. I am actually filming this on Halloween, so you guys will either be seeing this later today or tomorrow, but happy Halloween for those who celebrate. I thought I'd pop on a spooky shirt and have a spooky drink, and you know what? We are gonna be snacking on some candy corn throughout this whole video because usually I sit down for about an hour to film these and I need snacks, and I thought it is the perfect day. Anyway, you guys, it is officially time for the October reading wrap up, which is so insane. Every time I sit down to film one of these, I'm like, as if we're getting so close to the end of the year, it's kind of insane. But I read quite an interesting stack of books this month. I've technically read nine books, but I'm literally like a hundred pages off of finishing my 10th book. And I know I'm going to finish it tonight before this goes up. And it's technically still going to be in October. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on that final book, but no rating. I'll probably insert the rating at the very end because I will be editing this tonight after I finish the book anyways but I thought whilst I've got sunlight I'll give you guys the wrap up for the rest of the books all right guys I'm gonna get straight on into it because we've got a lot of books here today so without further ado let's get comfy let's get crazy and let's get right on into the video all right so as you guys may know if you've been around before I do like to talk about some statistics before we get into each of the books if you're new I do like to throw in my statistics at the beginning of the videos. So this month I read a total of 3,508 pages, which is insane. Looking at the stack in front of me, I read like some of the smallest books I read this month, but also some of the biggest, which is kind of interesting. And we had a variety of genres too. So I read four romance books, four dystopian young adult, one fantasy slash retelling and one romantic thriller, which is a genre that I don't think I have ever read before. I've definitely read thrillers in the past that have like a romantic subplot, but this one was specifically like a romantic thriller. So we'll get into that one in a second. So in terms of my ratings, I had one five star read. I had two four and a half stars. I had one 4.25 stars. I had one four star. I had two three and a half stars and two three stars. So as you guys can sort of hear there, I was really struggling this month to read a book that was five stars. I usually get like, I've been lucky enough to have at least one or two five star reads within each each reading month and I literally could not find a five star read for such a long time and also the majority of the books I was reading was sitting towards that you know that three star to like four star mark like the majority of my books were pretty okay I did read a few novellas this month and with novellas the highest rating that I usually give them is a three star because they're usually about a hundred and something pages I think the only novella I've given above a three star is um <laughs> a court of uh frost and starlight because you guys can't make me hate the christmas special okay it's just not my nature I'm gonna eat this entire jar. I just, I just know it. Also, you guys, I will be including my reading journal spreads in a B-roll too. So I know you guys like to see those and I always try to include them in my monthly videos. So the first three books I read were a continuation of a series. And it's funny because these are the first three books I read in this month. And I read them all within like two days of each other. I tried to film a video for you guys where I swapped my um, phone screen time for reading. So I tried to do that at the beginning of this month and it sort of worked. And then that's a story for another day what happened to that video, okay? Anyways, I read the next three books in the Shatter Me series. So the first one we had was Defy Me. I believe this is book number five, if I'm correct. I can't really, as I'm going to talk about the next three books here, I can't really tell you too much about what they're about because they are the back end of a series. But I will just give you my thoughts on it. So Defy Me, I gave 4.25 stars and a one and a half chili spice. I did notice towards the back end of the series that it is leaning more adult than young adult, if that makes sense. I think the first three books in this series definitely were more young adult. This is teetering the line a little bit. This was probably the last book in this series that gave me this feeling of like, I truly would consume anything that this author writes. I love the characters so much. They feel like my family and I just ate it up. So that was Defy Me. I then read Reveal Me. Now Reveal Me actually looks like this. Find Me has two novellas in one. This is from the point of view of a side character. And when I tell you guys, Kenji, if you guys have read Shadow Me before, Kenji is one of my absolute favorite characters of 
all time, I've never read a character as properly comedically written as Kenji is. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I want him to be my best friend. So anytime it's like one of his novellas, I just loved it. This one was pretty perfect. It was a three star for me. Like I said, I don't usually go above a, you know, a three star for a novella, but you know, it was a good different point of view. Then I read the last full size book in this series, which was Imagine Me. I will say without spoiling this book that if I didn't know there was another novella after this, this was like considered the last full length book, I would have been really disappointed. Like I sort of was saying, I really stayed on for the back end of this series because of the characters, because I just loved them so much and I wanted to know how their story sort of wrapped up. But in terms of the actual plot of the back end of the series, it just was not very strong, not very compelling. Like I said, if I by chance didn't really like love the characters so much, I probably wouldn't have finished the series. But yeah, this just fell really flat for me. I think this one I gave a three and a half star, which is pretty low for a conclusion to a almost 10 book series. Kind of anticlimactic. But like I said, stayed on for Aaron, Juliet and for Kenji because I just I love them all so 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 much. After that I read something really different for me because you guys do know I usually read like romantices or dark romances that are like sometimes retellings um, but I was very 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 kindly sent Wicked by Gregory Maguire. This is the movie tie-in cover so for those who aren't aware obviously the Wicked musical is being turned into a film and the musical is based on this book. So this book was re-released this month in preparation for the film that comes out on the 22nd of November. And I was so excited I think I've mentioned a few times on this channel that outside of reading and my bookish life, I am a singer and musical theatre is one of my absolute biggest passions in life. And I've been a massive fan of the musical for a very, very, very long time. So when I got this at my front door, I kind of lost my mind. For those who have seen the musical, you'll know that this is the untold story of the Witches of Oz. So you have Elphaba, who is infamously known as the Wicked Witch of the West, and you have Glinda, who is, you know, Glinda the Good Witch. If you're familiar, of course, with the Wizard of Oz, you know that that portrayal of of Elphaba is that she's this terrible horrendous person but the book Wicked actually shows this incredible backstory of Elphaba from the moment she's born all the way through until we meet her as the witch that she is known to be in The Wizard of Oz. And you also get to see that Elphaba and Galinda actually met each other at university, at like Shiz University, which is this very magical place where witches and wizards go to harness their powers and they start off as friends. The story sort of goes from there. What I will say about this book here is if you have seen the musical and you're a massive fan of the musical, it is very, very different. Um, the book is a lot darker and especially coming into this uh, promotional season before the film comes out, I see that, you know, the film is rated PG and there's a lot of kids merchandise and things. And that's great because I think the film will be and the musical is PG. However, this book is not, it's definitely for adults there's like 18 plus content in here it's very dark can be triggering for certain people so i just definitely say that if you're out with your kitties if you're a parent and you see them reach for a book that's got ariana grande on the cover maybe just double check with them and have a conversation because yeah it's a lot darker a lot heavier than what you're expecting so i would recommend this book if you love the musical and you love alphaba in particular because you're going to get a lot more meat to her backstory but i think again if you're just wanting to keep the the light fluffy wholesomeness i mean the musical is not wholesome it, it kind of is but it isn't okay if you've seen it you, you get it but if you want to keep that sort of vision in your head i'd say maybe give this a skip i ended up giving this a three and a half star and i will say that i sort of struggled towards the end but that's just not to take away anything from the fact that i just absolutely adore the story it's one of my favorite things and i'm so excited to see the film next month so yeah stay tuned on that i'll let you guys know what's happening with that very soon this month as well you guys had a lot of highly anticipated releases for me now i know i started off this video by saying that i didn't really stick to my tbr and that's true however the books that i did stick to on my tbr were like the predominantly the new releases so another book that i was not expecting to get early that i was so excited for i've literally had this book like marked on my calendar for months for months right so one day when i opened the door to a purple box on my front porch I said I can't believe I've got the strike by Anna Huang you guys know me I love Anna Huang more than life like it's not even a joke right she's one of the authors that reignited my love for reading when I got back into it a couple of years ago Twisted Games is one of my favorite books of all time I don't care what you say so when I heard that she was going to be dipping her toe into sports romance oh 
My lord, I was so, so excited. Like, if you're familiar with the Anna Huang universe, you know, we've got the, the Twisted series, we've got the Kings of Sin, you'll know that Asher Donovan, our MMC in this book, has been mentioned a few times, or sort of like hinted to who he is. And yeah, I was just so, so excited to read this book. So, this book follows Asher Donovan. He is a football player or a soccer player, if that helps you differentiate the type of sports star that he is. Very famous soccer player who has switched teams very recently and on this new team that he's joined he has a rival they just cannot stand each other and how the book opens is they're at this championship and their rivalry actually costs them like loses them sorry the championship they have a bit of a kerfuffle and disagreement and it loses them the championship so basically the manager says look you guys need to learn to get along you're on a team now especially when you're playing you need to put that aside or you need to mend your relationship so what you're going to be doing in the off season now that you know soccer season's on a break you're going to be spending some bonding time together and you guys are going to be taking ballet lessons or ballet classes because apparently you know it helps with agility and whatnot you know in the off season which totally fair enough so both of the boys start doing this like workshop and classes at a ballet academy and who else <laughs> is our little ballerina other than ash's rivals little sister scarlet who is an ex prima ballerina and then we sort of go from there we've got the brothers rival forbidden romance sort of thing and it is so so good you guys i have to say when i got this book and pulled it out of the box i could not believe the size of it this book is 576 pages which if you guys know me i usually say that a romance book longer than 500 pages or 450 pages is excessive like i'm sort of like what do you have to say that's you know that takes up that whole thing when i tell you guys this was worth every single page i sat down to read this book at 8 a.m i like sat down on my couch had my blanket going and I could not put it down. And then suddenly I looked up and it was 2.30 in the afternoon. I read this almost 600 page book in a day. If that does not tell you how addictive this book was, then I don't know what else is going to be because I don't know about you guys, but I really struggle sometimes to maintain focus for a book. That's especially something that's this long because when the books are this long, usually it's just filled with unnecessary jargon. And this was just not the case. I absolutely love Asha, but I love Scarlet so much as well as a character. I really related to her. She also has chronic pain because um, she was in an accident a few years ago that, you know, stopped her from being able to perform. Like I said, she's an ex prima ballerina. And just like how accurate Anna got that was really like nice to see because maybe it's just me, but I haven't really read too many other books that do have like chronic pain representation. So I just loved it. And guys, the spice in this book, Anna just never flops on the spice like I'm being so for real it was insane like all I'm gonna say is I'm a sucker for a mirror scene so just buckle the heck up the striker got a four and a half star for me and a two and a half chili spices please do yourselves a favor if you've tried Anna in the past a if you love her read this b if you feel like maybe the billionaire thing is just not for you you will love this. It's such a breath of fresh air. And like, honestly, I'm so excited to see what's to come because I know there's going to be another one after this. And yeah, I'm just so excited for Anna. Also, guys, what are we dressing up as for Halloween? I really am sad when Halloween falls on like a Thursday because parties happen like the weekend before. And I feel like parties should happen the weekend after. But tell me what you guys are going as. This is such a side note, but I am dyeing my hair back brown tomorrow. I literally am only keeping it red for tonight because I'm going to be Annabelle. <laughs> Follow my Instagram if you want photos, okay? Alrighty, so after I read The Striker, I <laughs> finally finished the very, very, very last book in the Shadow Me series. It's a novella, right? It's called Believe Me. It is like 177 pages. So you know how I showed you guys at the beginning of the month, I read those three books in the Shadow Me series like in a couple of days. I started it straight after I finished Imagine Me and then I started Believe Me. Tell me why a 177 page book took me two weeks to finish. I don't know if it was just because like either I was sort of like not interested in it or if I just like didn't want to say goodbye to my family, like I really don't know. So this is a very interesting way to finish a series. I feel like when a series is 10 books like this one, I thought it was very peculiar that we are, you know, we've got one full length book and then we have a novella to like complete the series. And I will just say you guys, without spoiling anything, that this is sort of feels like fan service. I was serviced, it's fine. It was a bow at the end of the series. I think it was like a little love letter from Tahara Mafi saying, thank you guys for sticking through. I know you love these characters. Here's a happily ever after, or here's, a, here's an ending to their story. Do I think that this book was necessary? 
Not really. Did it give me one of my favorite interactions between Kenji and Warner that I've literally ever read in my life yes for my final 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 thoughts on the shadow me series i will be posting a video over on my tiktok soon just sort of giving my final spoiler free thoughts on the series if you want a youtube video about it as well let me know but my thoughts on the series as a whole is the first three books of this series super strong super addictive in both the character and you know plot elements i was super engrossed in the plot as well as the characters and the relationships so that's how the first three books felt the back end of the series i feel was purely character driven and like i said if i didn't have a deep emotional attachment to these characters i probably would have stopped reading just after maybe the fourth book because i felt like the plot became really repetitive and super lackluster. That's not to say that I didn't love every single character that graced my presence. I think that they're such special characters and that's why I'm really like struggling about how I feel about this series because I think Tahera Mafi wrote some of the most complex, intricate, real characters that I've ever read. Like you know when an author really gets, like you know when they can really write a character that makes you laugh and it doesn't feel cheesy and it doesn't feel forced that's how her characters feel like she, it's real humor in their dialogue it's real passion it's real pain like i really felt that so my final thoughts on shadow me is read the first three books if you love the characters more than anything read the back end if you don't i would honestly consider shadow me done at ignite me which is book number three because it really does feel like a split in the series that being said i did give believe me three stars and we got a one and a half chili spice because i think tahara said okay guys you suffered through 10 books here is your on page full spicy scene which i was here for so that is my final thoughts on shadow me and you know the series as a whole next up was my romantic thriller that i was telling you guys about and i read Grimstone by Sophie Lark. Now this was one that was definitely not on my TBR. I ended up picking this up a few weeks ago and I'd seen it floating around for a while. I just didn't know if I was going to read it because I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys but last year I read There Are No Saints I think is what that book is called which I read on my Kindle just after I finished the cat and mouse duet so it felt super similar to me because that is a stalker romance it's a dark romance and I just didn't like it I think I gave it like a one and a half or like a two star it was a really big flop for me at that time I said I'm not going to read any more Sophie Lark however I said to myself this year that if I have read one book by an author that I didn't like I'm not writing them off completely and I'm going to give it another chance because I'm sure you guys know as readers too you know you might love one book that an author's written and absolutely despise the other so I think we have to just give them a bit more of a go so I thought in the spirit of Halloween and spooky months I'm gonna pick up Grimstone because it just looks so so cool so this book basically follows Remy Hayes she has just inherited this beautiful like mansion from I believe it's her uncle so her and her brother move into this house in this small town called Grimstone um, and basically on the first day that she rocks up there she notices that there's a neighboring property to hers and they have a run-in with the owner whose name is Dane and he is a very broody grumpy doctor sexy doctor oh my god who is like why are you using my road and she says what do you mean he's like this is my property this is my road like you can't use this road at all and she goes hold on mate my house is up the road there we share a road this is not your road he says it is my road so if you want to use the road you got to offer me something if you're using my road you got to give me something so she's like this guy can't be for real right now right so she's like okay what can i do what can i offer you like is there anything around the house that i can help you fix because I'm, I'm i'm very swift and, and handy you know you know i'm a good renovate person i'm sorry i can't speak english he's like okay you can help me do some things around my house and fix my fence and blah 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 he obviously doesn't want her to fix his fence i mean who wants to do a bunch of other stuff if you catch my drift and basically their little arrangement goes from there he's a doctor he only works at night he's a little bit creepy and as remy starts speaking to a lot of the townies she starts to realize that this dane guy is really 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 weird and he has been suspected of murdering his wife and his son the book sort of goes from there when i tell you guys that this is a romantic thriller there's also the element of you know remy's moved into this house and at night she starts experiencing all these weird things that she just knows she's not doing on her own and it's weird like the piano starts playing by itself and like there's things ending up in her sink and weird things so like i said this is a romantic uh 
thriller because the romance plot is super 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 strong in this book but the entire time you're trying to figure out a what happened to Dane's wife and the baby and also what's going on inside Remy's house so I really really liked this book I also want to commend Sophie I didn't really remember this from the last time I read you know her other book what really sets Sophie Lark apart is two things one authors always put playlists at the beginning of their books however Sophie's books will have a playlist and when you actually Actually, like start reading certain like scenes or chapters she will tell you to like press play on a song and when I tell you guys if you do this at the exact right time and read at the same time the music just elevates your reading experience so much like it just works in so well with the scene it's incredible and also on top of that there are drawings and pictures like through multiple points in the book which is super super cool and like I said just really like especially for a book like this and for dark romances just makes them so much more you know intriguing I just I just loved it it was such such a cool thing I ended up giving this book a four star and I think I gave it a two and a half chili spice I'm just looking at my journal I ended up rating this a little bit lower than I originally thought because I did end up sort of guessing slash feeling like the plot twist was a little bit underwhelming at the end but that's not to say that it was some of the best spice I've ever read really great concept really awesome on the vibes so it was an overall a very solid book the next book that I read I can't believe I got sent I can't believe I got dm'd by this author because that's insane at first I got this dm and I said you're lying to me like this is a prank this is a prank. When I saw that Devony Perry herself had reached out to me and asked if I wanted to receive a copy of Crossroads, I literally lost my mind because I love Devony Perry. Okay, you guys don't get it. Okay, so I started reading the Eden series earlier this year and I just, I loved it. The way that she gets small town vibes and like, is, I just, I was, I was obsessed. I loved it. And also because like, if you guys have read Indigo Ridge, which is the first book in that series, it's like a mystery. Like there's a mystery in there too. And it's so good. Anyway, this is her first book in her new series, which is the Haven River Ranch series. And it's called Crossroads. And look at this beautiful edition, guys. It's got purple sprayed edges and it's just so good. And guys, I think this kickstarted me back into one of my favorite things ever and just like reignited my love for it because I've always loved this genre. You guys know I love this genre, but small town country and like cowboy romances, there is nothing like the feeling I get when I read those. I feel like I'm coming home there is just something so atmospheric about those books and I want to be in Texas or something you know like I need it like it's not a joke like get me out of Australia I've had enough so guys this book follows West and Indy so this is a past present childhood friends to lovers right person wrong time sort of vibe second chance like I said right so West and Indy so Indy and her family have been coming to Montana for vacation every summer since she was a very small child and basically this book shows like each time we encounter her with her family at this ranch and we see her meeting West who is a boy a little bit older than her and it sort of shows multiple times throughout their lives where you know they spend time with each other and they get to know each other and they're growing up with each other but they only see each other during during the summer um, vacation. That's sort of their backstory there. We sort of jump to the present where we see that Indy has actually moved back to Montana and she's now the owner of this ranch. She's basically taking over from West and his family who own this ranch and that definitely creates a lot of friction because when Indy and West were you know a little bit older just starting college circumstances sort of forced them apart and they didn't really end things on great terms. So now Indy's living on this ranch trying to fix it up and get it ready to be a really nice commercial destination spot for people to come and stay and the story sort of goes from there this was so good you guys it's super short it's like 275 pages i think yeah super short super addictive this is another one like the striker that i was telling you guys about where literally i couldn't put it down like i started reading it and then i had stuff to do and i was like i just want to keep reading super cozy super like i just love the past present time frame in a book like seeing that is so good it was just so funny like the side characters are really wholesome i cannot wait to read the next one i believe it's called sunlight um and the tropes in that just sound amazing and i'm just so grateful that i got the chance to read this because it was so 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 good i don't think i see enough people talking about this so I definitely recommend I ended up giving this book a four and a half star as well and this one got a two chili spice yeah like I said if you guys love small town cowboy a little bit of like emotional towards the back end too I low-key like went through the end of a box of tissues <laughs> at the end of it but it was so wholesome like if you guys have read Devony's other books please pick this up and the next book like I said sunlight it just 
Sounds delicious. It's gonna be so good. I'm gonna go absolutely ape on this person outside my house who's on the ride on mower, mowing the lawns outside. Like I get it's your job, but I'm also trying to do my job. It's okay. And the final full book that I finished this month, because I told you guys there's a book after this that I'm gonna finish tonight. I promise. Okay, I just I just don't have time to do it later, okay? So final full book that I read this month was one that I was like super, super, super anticipating. And if you guys follow me over on my Instagram, you may have seen I put up a story a couple of days ago saying like, guys, I'm really struggling this month. I feel like I've read no books that have like knocked my socks off, like thrown me for a loop like where is my five star of this month like where is my five star read so i asked you guys to sort of like comment and give me your like fi favorite five star reads i forgot that there was a book that came out that i have had on my shelf because i bought it on release day i just didn't get around to it yet because i felt like i was in a bit of a slump because obviously like i said hadn't found anything that was super five stars like i think the strongest books that i read up until this point were definitely the striker and crossroads like they were probably the strongest books that i read but nothing that met the five star material anyways i forgot that i had i you guys actually don't understand i'm getting emotional looking at this book for so many reasons because it is so good and i'm it's still raw in my head and I have so many things to say about it. So I'm just going to show, I'm just going to hold the book up. Okay. This is Holding the Reins by Paisley Hope. I have no words. Okay, you guys, this just got traditionally published here in Australia. I know that there is an indie cover of it floating around, but this just got traditionally published here. And I saw a few of my friends over on TikTok who live in the UK talk about this book, but it's still quite unknown and it needs to be known. This is going to be, without a word of a lie, the next big cowboy romance series this book is sensational i'm taking this so seriously i don't know how to feel because i have not processed holding the reins yet this book follows nash carter and cc ashby okay nash carter is a retired ice hockey player who has just come back to his hometown to start running this center for for kids to teach them how to do hockey and he's basically been very 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 close with this Ashby family his entire life. It's almost like they're his family because his parents passed away quite young um, and his parents became almost like his adoptive family. So he has been family, friends and best friends with the kids of this family obviously. So we've got Cole, we have Wade and we have Cece who is the youngest daughter in this family. And Cece has also just moved back to this hometown after she split with her horrendous fiance ex-fiance, get him out of my face. And she's come back to Silver Pines for a fresh start. Cece obviously having just gotten out of that uh, bad engagement is not looking for anything serious um, and is sort of like being super picky with the guys that she gets involved with and she has known Nash her entire life but he's also been known to be a player, a playboy and she's like I just got rid of one of those. I do not need another one. But basically circumstances force them into this scenario and this situation where Cece ends up getting a job working at the center that Nash now runs. Like I said, his sporting center for um, the kids. And she starts working on his books and doing his bookkeeping. So we've got a boss employee. We've got brother's best friend. I have no words to tell you guys about this book, but I'm going to try. So as I was saying to you guys, I saw a few of my friends recommend me this and everybody who had read this told me or was saying, I should say, that it was a five star read and that it is going to be the next best thing or it is their new favorite cowboy romance. I don't know why this book has like literally gripped me so hard. Okay, let's just let's just break it down. OK, the side characters, the family element, it just feels so real and so funny. All of the side characters are so unique. They are so fleshed out. I feel like I'm part of the family when I'm sitting there eating at their dinner table. Like that's how this book feels. OK, then Nash, Nash Carter. You guys don't understand. You're going to need to remember that name because he is Without a doubt, I'm sorry, Daddy Cade. I love Daddy Cade and I love Daddy West. Nash Carter is the best written small town romance MMC that I have literally ever read in my entire life. I don't know what it was about this man. I think it was because it was a guy falls first scenario. This guy would do literally anything for Cece. It is not even funny. And the spice, when I tell you guys the spicy rating that I gave this book, you're gonna think I'm lying because I've never ever given a book that high of a spicy rating and there is a spicy scene in this it's the last spicy scene in the book that is now on my roman empire spicy scene list okay i just have to tell you guys a quote okay because when i read this quote i said yeah this is my new all-time favorite cowboy romance book they're like out looking at the stars and whatever this is not a spoiler this is just a beautiful quote okay i want this tattooed on my body okay this man says f the stars there's nothing more beautiful than her like they're looking up at the stars and she's like 
obsessed with them and he just says in his head he's like f the stars there's nothing more beautiful than her like who is saying that and that's not even that's not even all of it i could tell you so many more quotes but they'd be more spoilers right this book was a five star book it is an infinity star read for me like i said to you guys i don't i have no words like i'm still processing and it is one of my new favorite books of all time and it's definitely my new favorite cowboy book i'm so excited for what this author has coming i am about to show you the next book that i'm reading and i'm reading it now but this series is going to be the next big thing okay so get your hands on it like i said five star book and i gave this book four chili spices which i just do not do i'm being so for real i think the only book i've ever given four stars is like haunting and hunting adeline and for the fans by Nyla Kay. This book got a four star, not because of the intensity, I mean, sometimes the intensity, but the frequency of the scenes, the quality of the scenes, the, the insane, like Paisley was just thinking outside the box, okay? I cannot, I, you guys are gonna hear me talking about this book non-stop. Like, like I said, I got emotional thinking about it. Just please pick it up. And that leads me on to the next part, which is the 10th book that I read this month and the final book, I'm gonna finish it tonight, okay? Because I started this book last night haven't been able to put it down. I went to the gym this morning and I read it on the treadmill, which I just, I just don't do. That is not me and not on my Kindle. I took a proper book to the gym this morning, okay? The 10th and final book I read this month that I'll be completing tonight is Training the Heart, which is book two in this series. I don't even know if I told you guys, it's the Silver Pine series. So this is also by Paisley Hope. This follows another couple. They're interconnected standalones. So we've got Wade, who is Cece's brother, and we've got Ivy, who is a new horse trainer on the ranch we've got this insane grumpy sunshine dynamic and this man you guys basically on this ranch that they live on wade's sort of in charge of everything right like it's his land he's sort of the boss um and his horse trainer summer i believe her name's summer is going up sam samantha she's going away on maternity leave and she can no longer you know train the horses and they've got some big things coming up so wade knows that he needs to start looking for a horse trainer and this sort of starts taking place in the previous book where we know they're looking for a new trainer and he ends up hiring ivy who is this absolutely like gorgeous sunshine sunshine girl who loves life is full of fun and light they are complete opposites he's the grumpy grump and she is the sunshine who just keeps leaving her scrunchies all over the place and he you know is just it's just like gosh why do I need to hire this girl but she's very good at what she does we sort of have like a little bit of forced proximity here too we have a road trip one bed and it's super good I can't tell you too much about this is what this is about because I don't want to spoil it and like I said to you guys I've only got like this much left and I'm gonna finish that tonight or maybe this afternoon because all I can think about is this book so far all I'm gonna say to you guys is the spice in these books are immaculate the men both men so far have had like acts of service as their love languages or one of their love languages and that's my favorite I love words of affirmation but acts of service like I'm an acts of service girly like I love that so much when the men are attentive like that's how these men are at the moment like because I haven't finished the book I'm obviously at like a four or four and a half star for this book but I haven't finished it yet so I can't give it yet but like I was saying for both of these like please 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 read these books they are so good if you love small town you love cowboy romances you will just devour these there is another one coming out next year I'm so excited for this one okay because I've met both the characters and it's gonna be delicious I love a blue book okay I don't know what it is with me in the book series the blue one is always my favorite and I just know okay this one's gonna be so good so Paisley if you're watching this babe I love love you like just want to also say the fact that this is a debut novel is insane i've never given a debut novel five stars before so that doesn't tell you i don't know what does all right you guys that is all for today's video thank you guys so much for sticking through all the way to the end if you did i really really appreciate it how did you guys go in october what did we read did we succeed did we not succeed that's okay did we read some amazing books some not great books and what is your favorite book that you read this month i think you guys know what my favorite book was but i think if i had to pick a top three top three we do crossroads the striker and then of course holding the reins you know what else is really funny you guys i was talking to a couple of girlfriends the other day over on TikTok and there have been so many purple book releases this year like I think 2024 has been the book the book <laughs> has been the year of purple books like even look at holding the rain um holding the heart training the heart sorry purple so many purple books which is really really funny but yeah if anything you guys take any recommendations definitely those three I think they were all super strong we got two you know small town and we got one sports romance so good like please 
please read these books. As always, you guys, if you aren't already, you are more than welcome to follow me on TikTok and on Instagram. I will leave my handles on the screen and in the description. And if you aren't already, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel and make sure you are hitting that notification bell. That way you're notified each time a brand new video goes up. We are getting into the festive time of year, you guys. So I will be changing my decor the next time you see me. Um, and the next video that is going up, I believe is going to be a cute little bookish sleepover so we can hang out together. We can read together, have a cozy night in. But yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping by again. I really, really appreciate it. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a lovely day or a lovely night. Happy Halloween. Be safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.